Believe it or not, this is the new Skoda Karok, and I know it looks exactly the same as last year's model, but actually this is a new variant with all-wheel drive and a larger engine. When the Karok launched, we liked it as a kind of quirky alternative to the mainstream midsize SUV crowd. So apart from those headline features, what does this new Sportline add to the Karok formula? Before we get there, we get a lot of questions on YouTube about how we get to the scores at the end of our videos, and those are actually made up of eight individually scored subheads over on the main written review on carsguide.com.au, so make sure to go over there and check that out. Also, hit those like, subscribe, and bell icon buttons to stay up to date with all of our latest videos. So here we are, this new variant, the 140 TSI Sportline, wears quite a price premium over the lower 110 TSI, which has also been mildly overhauled for 2020. Wearing a taller MSRP, the Sportline strays from the Karox budget origins and aims for somewhere a little more premium. And I know what some of you are thinking, isn't this just a VW Tiguan with a slightly different body? And the answer is sort of yes, but also no, because Skoda has actually cut roughly 100 millimeters from the length of the car, and they've cut 50 millimeters from the top of the car. And it doesn't sound like much, but it goes a long way to making the Karok a little bit more city friendly. It's round the back here that the Skoda gives away its most recent update. You can see it's got a redesigned tailgate with this Skoda typeface across the back and a slightly remodeled tail light design. It's subtle, but I think it's an update that suits this car well, because it's not the kind of SUV that really catches your eye as it drives past. It's the kind of one that's subtle and you accidentally gaze upon it and find a lot to like. It's like a lot of Skodas, really. Inside has only changed slightly from the previous year's model. With the addition of some simple things like a digital instrument cluster and, on our car, a wireless phone charging bay. In here, it's again simple, but has a bunch of European panache brought about by these nice big screens, these subtle chrome finishes, and these nice soft touch surfaces that go all the way across the dash. It's extra impressive when you consider that Skoda is pitched as a budget alternative in its home market of Europe. We actually asked Skoda why its cars are so highly specified in Australia, given it could be stepping on VW's toes. And the brand said it tried to sell more affordable models that simply weren't popular. I have to say though, it does have some weird European market quirks that are specific to this grade. My favorite of which are these seats. They're bucket seats. They're clad in this odd breathable synthetic material. They have this weird plaid pattern on them. They're heated and weirder still, they're only manually adjustable. You can't get electrical adjust at all on the Sportline grade, nor can you get leather seats. They're just sort of bizarre. That's right, this is the only seat trim you can pick on the Sportline. It's just one of a few compromises you'll be stuck with by picking the Sportline over the base car. The back seat is cool too, with the same breathable seat trim, and it's even heated here with controllable vents and a bunch of practical cup holders. But one of the major areas that you'll be let down in the Sportline over the regular Karok is there's no VarioFlex seating, which means that this last row isn't on rails like it is in the regular Karok. In fact, in the regular Karok, you can take the rear seats out altogether to make it almost like a minivan in terms of practicality something you might want to keep in mind when picking the larger engine. Thankfully, the Sportline is still above average in terms of boot space, which easily fit our largest Cars Guide case with room to spare. Not to be forgotten are the caddies and nets which fit into Skoda's clever practicality promise. But still, we can't help but feel like the Sportline is nowhere near the practicality of the 110 TSI. And you can't make it as luxurious either, with one less option pack, meaning no leather seats or a sunroof. But standard trim is good. Sportline has 19-inch wheels, LED headlights, a digital dash cluster, keyless entry, push start ignition, dual zone climate control, auto emergency braking, active cruise, and lane departure warning, all part of its package. Our car's larger screen, sat-nav, premium audio, digital radio, and wireless charging is all part of a $4,100 pack. But we'd recommend only the other pack. 
Costing just $2,600, it adds blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, and the awesome adaptive suspension, which lets you squeeze the most out of the Sportline's more powerful drivetrain. And you'll want to too, because this two liter engine is much better than the engine that sits below it in the base car. It's one of Volkswagen Group's newest engines, and it's been employed to great success in other recently launched vehicles like the T-Roc. Now the Kroc is much heavier than the T-Roc, so it doesn't have that hot hatch kind of feel, but still with the adaptive suspension and all wheel drive system, it's a confident little SUV. It's one of the major draw cards of that active suspension as well, because not only is it nice and flat and confident in the corners, but changing the drive modes, they aren't just for show. The comfort mode also makes it undulate over the bumps and quietens down the cabin a bit as well. Having the extra torque from that two liter engine removes a lot of the complaints we usually have about these Volkswagen Group dual clutch transmissions as well. There's much less of that turbo lag kind of feeling there's much less of being caught in between gears without any torque even the stop start system seems a lot smarter as well there's less of those instances where you're caught without any torque at a t-junction for example and you always have plenty of power when it comes to overtaking so while it might not be as nimble as something like the t-roc it's still a lot of fun to get the revs up on a good road like this. Skoda even plums a little bit of the engine noise, that's right, engine noise, not exhaust noise, into the cabin so that you get a little bit of that oral flare as well. In terms of ownership, Skoda offers a competitive with rivals five-year unlimited kilometre warranty, as well as pre-packaged service packs allowing you to bundle in your first three or five years of routine maintenance costs in on finance at the time of purchase and at a discount too. A bit slicker, definitely faster, the Sportline finally adds a healthy dose of attitude to the Karok range. It's worth noting though, you will definitely make some practicality compromises when it comes to picking the higher engine grade, so keep that in mind. And also we would recommend that travel pack option as the adaptive suspension really helps you make the most of the extra power on offer.